Hello and welcome to the second video in our wing building for beginners. Now in the first video what we did is we actually looked at the different components that go into a wing and then we started to actually put everything together. So at the end of that video where we ended up was kind of here where the wing is physically together because they tend to come in several pieces. We installed the little servos, little bit of hot glue to kind of keep them in place. We popped in our carbon fiber reinforcement spars as per the instructions for the wing. And we'd also spent a little bit of time moving these control surfaces to make sure that they were nice and free. The only other thing I've done here, you can probably see it if I just move it around in the video, is I've installed the little horns that come as part of the kit. That's what we're going to connect the servos to in a minute. So now we have lots of individual pieces hanging around that we can actually start to put together. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things really. First of all, we're going to set up the model on the radio. We use a Tronis, but the process that you go through is very similar for any different radio. And then we'll also talk about how we're going to connect all these individual discrete pieces up to get ready to go for a test flight. So let's talk a little bit about the receiver that we're going to use. Now we looked at that last time. It's one of these really small dinky receivers, this little guy, which is from FR Sky. So the first thing we need to do is look at how we're gonna configure the radio itself, because configuring the radio is actually going to tell us where we're going to plug all of these different components into, the ESC and the two servos out on each wing. Now again, most radios have their own particular way of doing it, but we'll do it on the Tyrannus, and the way we're going to do it is by selecting the wing from the model creation menu. Now if you're not familiar with the Tyrannus, then you can go and watch our OpenTX Mix School, and we have both a video series on the Tyrannus as well as the QX7 radios. What we're going to do is just go through and accept the defaults for each of these settings. So what it's going to do is tell us that the throttle is going to be on channel 1, and then importantly it's going to tell us that channels two and three are going to be for our two servos. Now this little icon that we are being shown here showing how to wire it up we're going to need later on so let's make a note of that. Just accepting all of the others maybe just adding a little bitmap in here so we have a little image of a wing when we go back to the main menu putting a little timer in all standard stuff back out of that just move the controls and make sure you can see everything moving. First of all, we can see that channel one is the throttle and we can see that channels two and three are those servos. And as I'm moving the right stick around, it's moving both the elevator and the aileron together and we're getting half of the travel for each of those two controls. So overall, we're getting 100% travel if you have full aileron and full elevator on that particular aileron in the flying wing. So now we know that, we can actually think about putting this together because using that information, we know where all of these things are gonna to have to be connected onto our little receiver. So the easiest way to explain that is let's jump into a diagram. So here we have our receiver at the top and we have the two servos that we've installed into each wing and we're assume we're looking at the top down and there's our ESC and motor setup. Now the way we're gonna to have to do this is use the manual for the receiver and that little diagram that we just looked at on the Tyrannus screen itself, showing us which channels each of the servos should plug into. Now I expect we might have to do a little bit of reversing and changing on the radio setup, but that's all part of how we're gonna configure a flying wing, so we're not gonna to worry too much about that just yet. We also are going to connect the ESC and motors together. Now both the ESC and motor, if we just go back to the desk, you can see that both of those have three wires. We're just gonna solder those together. If we find that the motor is turning in the wrong direction, the easiest and fastest way to sort that out is just swap any two of the three wires, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Once we've connected the motor to the ESC, then we're gonna to have to connect the ESC to the receiver itself. And again, we're using an ESC here that has a little one amp battery eliminator circuit, and that means that it will supply the five volts to power the receiver and also the servos too. So that's straightforward. We're going to connect the negative wire to the negative pad on this little receiver, the positive plus five volts to the plus five volts pad, and the signal wire from that cable from the ESC into channel one. And we know it's channel one because that's what it looks like in the diagram. 
Now, if you're using another kind of receiver that uses stand or servo plugs, then you're just going to plug that servo lead just go back to the desk, see that these are all kind of servo leads here. We just plug these servo leads into the relevant channel on receiver. Because we're using this really, really small receiver from FR Sky, we're going to have to do a little bit of soldering. So if you're not using one of these, it's not a problem. All you do is you just plug this lead into channel one on your receiver. Make sure that you're plugging it in the right way round. The brown wire is negative red wire is positive and that lovely orange wire or sometimes it's a white wire is your signal. Now the two servos we've got to plug those in next we'll plug in the left one first the left wing is going to be channel 3 because that's what the little diagram said on our radio so we're going to plug the positive and negative wires into the positive and negative terminals on that little receiver and we're also going to plug the signal wire from that left hand servo into the th channel 3 output on the receiver and then finally we're going to do the same for the right servo which is going to plug into channel 2. So that is a little bit of soldering that I'll just have to do and then we'll come back and have a look. So let me just pause the video there and then once I've got that little bit wired up let's go back to the desk and we'll have a look at what it looks like. So to make this build as neat as I possibly could, the first thing I did was actually take the heat shrink off the ESC and then made off the ends, connected the three wires from the motor directly to the soldered connections for the three wires that were there already. Also added my own power lead as well, which was going to be the right one for the kind of connection on the battery that I needed. I'm going to use a little JST style. And then the last thing I did was start making off the receiver. Clipped all the wires to length, twisted all of the positive and negative leads together, soldered those and pre-tinned them, then cut those to the right length and then popped them onto the receiver, pre-tinning everything on the receiver. And it was just a case of connecting those three signal wires on to the receiver for the ESC and the two servos as we've just looked at. So underneath this little canopy it's relatively sorted. So I'll just um, I'll take this off so you can see it. So there's our wiring, there's our little receiver with all the cables connected. Again I've put a little bit of heat shrink over it and bring it up to the camera so you can see it slightly better. So there's the receiver with the heat shrink with all the cables connected onto it and I've also put some more heat shrink around the speed controller as well. Now that means that we're all connected so now we've got to make sure that everything is going to work. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that each of the servos and everything are all working and that the motor is good too. Now we need to make sure it's returning the right way because the prop that came with the kit the motor is going to have to turn in a clockwise direction. Again, if we have a problem with that, that's not a showstopper. We can just change the direction. And then we also need to make sure that the servos are at 90 degrees. Now, the reason for that, and let me just talk a little bit about wing geometry. So here is our wing. There's our servo. And that little thing down there is where it's going to connect to. The way we make the control rods, um, and again, this is all covered... Uh, in the manual for this thing. But the way we make the control rods is there's a piece of carbon fibre, carbon fibre rod, little bit of heat shrink, and then we have a number of Z-bends that you're going to put in each end. And the idea is, is that the, it's going to run kind of like that from the control to the servo. Now you really want the servo to the control rod to be 90 degrees and that way as the servo moves forwards and backwards you get the same travel on either side. So we're going to have to fire up the radio, make sure that the servo is centering at that amount. We're probably going to have to use our sub trim to do that uh, for both sides and we also need to make sure they're moving in the right direction. Once we've done that then we can make up these little rods we're probably going to have to cut them to length. When you're going to cut these rods, the other tip I'll give you is don't cut them using something like pliers. You need to use something abrasive like a needle file or a little Dremel cutting wheel to cut them to length. This looks slightly too long, so I'm going to have to take about an inch off this or about two, two and a half centimetres and then uh, heat shrink the little Z bends on each end and we'll be good. Okay, but we'll come back to that in a minute. We need to make sure that this is all working. 
Now I'm going to try and do this so it actually all fits in the screen, which is a little bit tricky because even though this is a smaller wing, it isn't ideal. Okay, let's turn on the radio. Welcome to Tyrannus. Let's plug in the battery. We need to check, set the failsafe up. That's a very timely reminder. Plug in the power. Okay, there we go. We have a green light on the receiver, so that's promising. Now, if I move the motor, there's the motor spinning, and it's spinning the right way. If it wasn't spinning the right way, I could just swap any two of the three wires going from the speed controller to the motor. And now we need to pull the control back. Now we want both of these servos to be going forward, to going that way to pull the control surfaces up when we pull the stick down. Only that one's going the right way, that one isn't. Oh dear, that one's reversed. And similarly, if we want to go left and right, then unfortunately left, that one's going the right way because we want this control surface going up, so this servo has to go forward, but this control surface has to go down, so this servo has to go back. So that's moving in the wrong direction as well. Okay, so this servo here is actually moving in the wrong way. Now, if I remember right, that is actually servo two. So what we're going to do in the radio then is we'll go into the menu, we'll jump into the mixes. A couple of ways we could do this. We could just reverse that entire servo. Um, I like actually changing the mixes. So I'm going to go onto channel two, change the direction of the elevator control change the direction of the aileron control let's try that now there we go so now if I bring this back in hopefully you can see the servos as I move the stick backwards they both go forwards great as I move it to the left this one should go that way that one should go that way which it does and vice versa so that's fixed that bit last thing I need to do is just to get these servos at exactly 90 degrees because at the moment they're not apologies for the exposure of the camera it's been a bit daft today uh, I'm just gonna have to go into the sub trim menu let's go for channel 2 I'm just gonna play with the sub trim here and what I'm looking for is that servo going to 90 degrees that's pretty close We'll go down and we'll do the next one. We'll do the left hand one. That's going the right way again. And we want it pretty much in line. That's pretty close. Okay, so that now should mean that my controls are okay. Super job. Now I can connect the rods from the servos to the control surfaces themselves. So that's the next part of the job. Uh, with this video already being a little bit longer than I wanted, we're not gonna get a chance to fly it. So come back when I've done all those last pieces. Once you've got it absolutely spot on and made sure that you're all 90 degrees, the last tip I'll give you is I would always have some very slight up aileron about 10 degrees worth for your first maiden flight. So I'd actually manually put that in. You can always uh, change that later on. And I'd also make sure that the center of gravity is exactly where it needs to be. Maybe two or three millimeters ahead of where it needs to be. For this one, it's 110 millimeters from the front. I've checked that with this battery here, I'm using this um, Zippy battery, uh, that gives me perfect center of gravity. So let me finish all these last little pieces and we'll come back for the last video where I'll talk about the last few tips and we'll take this thing out for a fly. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. 
If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.